Ian Palma. I own a graphic design company here in Huntington Village with my best friend and partner, Maria Misco. We are a beautiful mix of art and business. In the chamber, I am on the board, and I started the Arts and Experiences Committee about a year and a half ago. Um, and this public art crawl is the baby of the Arts and Experiences Committee. So what the crawl is, is last year we started our first annual. This is our second. Um, last year we wanted to get people back into the town. We were kind of still in pandemic -y mode, so we really wanted to get people back into the village, support the arts, support our businesses. So we put together a map that had over a dozen public artworks. So we figured it would be a fantastic way for people to come, be outside, be safe, enjoy the local art and really the enriched community that we have here. Um, it was a huge success. It was just a no-brainer to do it again. Um, so this year it's bigger and better. We have an art market going on right now. We have 10 local artists selling. This is our home base. We have, we're handing out totes that's been designed by a local artist. Um, wristbands, we have a lot of businesses in town that are being involved. They're giving out specials for all our participants. Um, so there's just so many things that are going on. We have a live illustrator happening right now, creating a Huntington illustration. We have Beth doing a great mural. So we have so many happening things. Uh, we had live music at the Huntington Historical Society. Six Harbors has a local food truck going on. There's so many places that highlight such great local artists that we, it just has become this huge village-wide art experience that we can share with the community and really show why people come to Huntington as a destination because it's a place that's so rich in culture and has so many unique entrepreneurs and businesses that are happening. And it's just a perfect day, it's gorgeous to bring us all together and celebrate what Huntington really has to offer. Well, hello, welcome to Going Local Tours and Experiences, highlights of the public art crawl tour. My name is Melissa Farrell, I'm the owner of Going Local Tours and Experiences and our mission is to support local business. We do food tours, walking tours, street art tours, we do going local picnics to bring local to you. But we also support our local artists. Now by show of hands, how many of you are guilty of going out in public, seeing a piece of public art like a mural, taking a picture, and that's it? All of us, right? So I was the same person. In New York, in particular, on Long Island in particular, every dollar you put into the creative sector locally, $5.25 goes into your local economy. So by merely buying a $5 ticket to something, you're putting in $25 into the local economy, five times five, 25. Um, imagine when that gets multiplied, when we manage to put $1,000 of public art into the, into the space from tax dollars, and you're putting $5,000 into the businesses. And the way that works is it attracts tourism. People come in, they shop, they eat, they drink, they buy local, and it goes right to there. Someone else is hired. You help someone maintain their own business. You help people be entrepreneurs because you're pulling people into this space and you're providing cultural capital. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm here in front of Madison's Niche today because I'm participating in the Huntington Art Crawl. I'm doing interactive painting. Huntington is a really thriving community full of artwork and local artists, and I'm so happy to be in that community and participate. So our first mural is gonna be Perea, which is that little Greek place. Now, Perea actually stands for a group of people together derived out of pure pleasure. So right now, I am praying with all of you. I hope you're praying with me as well. Part of public art is interacting with the town and the town's support of everything going on. Uh, and John is, as deputy supervisor, has been very supportive of us, helping us with the public art program. Uh, I just want to know if any of your thoughts on the programs coming up or the things that have gone on in the past. Well, just uh, like today, the art crawl is a wonderful way to get people out and about on a nice day. Mm -hmm. Walking around the village, which shows our nice walkable village. Mm -hmm. You have an excellent tour guide and Melissa mm -hmm. knows, knows what she's doing and showing off some nice art. So yeah. this is great. It's great. But this is the place to come before and after our shows at the Paramount. There's Beth Costello. So what Spotlight asked Beth to do was they said we're musical, we're colorful, we love the arts. What did she deliver? Beautiful, colorful, loves the arts, right? All right, we're gonna walk across the street to Soul Brew and see a second local look. Now, Soul Brew is all about feeding your soul. They want it to be a place that you go to and you feel like it's part of a daily routine that you look forward to. Inside is all local art in the walls. It's all for sale. So the local look that's hanging up right now is done by Jen Salta. She's actually a metal jewelry artist and also a painter. It's one of my favorite local look pieces. It's such a marrying of the two businesses. Those of you who want to try out Soul Brew after our tour, they're doing a buy one, get one right now on coffees for the special today with your bracelets. I first saw this mural, I walked past it a hundred times, no idea the story. One day I was doing a tour and the owner walked out and he shared with me that if you notice, these are all four individual pictures kind of, right? All four pictures are actually hanging inside the restaurant. 
and it's the inspiration of this mural. So you actually go down to Portofino, look around it, and you're gonna see that picture, that picture, that picture, and that picture. So the artist who actually goes by Poor Rupert, his name is Chris, grew up in Baldwin, really big street artist. He actually worked inside MB Ramen and did all the work inside Mission Taco, right on New York Avenue. All right, so this is public facing art because a business bought this. But the goal of this is to stand here and to take a picture of yourself looking all sorts of cute fancy and you're like, yeah, I'm so amazing. And it goes on social media. And then the shed gets all this credit for it. The mural is a collaboration between the building owner and me in regards to the saying and um, of his father. A Wonderful Life in Huntington was on his father's gravestone. So he wanted to commemorate his father and keep that saying on you because his father lived here, I think, all his life. So it's, um, it's a pleasure to actually, it's an honor to actually be painting this wall because I feel like we will hopefully do him justice and, you know, everybody knows what um, a wonderful place Huntington is. This is an amazing bar inside. So now, Repeal actually ended up with a local look, which is right here. You guys want to check it out. Repeal is all about prohibition. Repeal is the 18th Amendment, right? All about having fun, misbehaving, and celebrating. So we had to pair an artist with them. We couldn't find one that was going to match right away until we found Kristen Mole. She's actually a psychiatrist who finds the perfect within the imperfect and photographs it and paints it and, and does all sorts of artwork. But she loves to work with old antiques. So she actually created this, um, this record, put the label on it, said, let's, be let's behave and celebrate, and then added actually antique stuff inside of this. Come look at it in a minute, it also lights up. I love that. So we're here at the mural at Lilu that was commissioned by Lilu by, for Splashes of Hope for this, the restaurant, uh, which is a beautiful montage of Quindry Hall and the Golden Coast uh, here in Huntington, some of the making little spots at the lighthouse. This is a great showing of the intersection of public art and the interaction, uh, partially sponsored by the town, partially by a nonprofit, part about a business and just local people who came to volunteer with the nonprofit in order to actually have this be executed. Public art is so important that it's not just about an entity having the artwork done. It's about the everybody as a whole being together as a community to make sure that we're working towards helping the culture progress, help arts and culture stay relevant and continue the dialogue going forward of our collective histories and our collective culture. And so that's why this mural in particular for me has been so, was so great to see this kind of happen. Uh, and Top of Splashes of Hope just being a fantastic nonprofit to work with as a partner with, arts, with uh, Huntington Arts. Uh, they work with medical facilities, with vets, to make sure that everyone gets to experience arts and culture, art, and really kind of brightens their lives through all these, these splashes of color. All right, the local look I'm gonna show you in a second. It's my friend Marnie. Marnie paints seashells. It all started because about two years ago, again, a sad story, her brother was diagnosed with stage four cancer and passed away two months later. In order to deal with the pain and the grief of losing her brother, he was a big surfer. She went to the beach all summer long, collected seashells. At the end of the summertime, Marty paints a shell for one of her friends as a gift. Another one likes it, another one likes it, turns it into a whole business. Right now, two years later, she's quit her full-time job. She's a full-time artist. She made over a thousand custom shells. And the shell she made for James and Megan, who own Lelou, is actually a picture of their family. Lelou is all about family. It's named after their two daughters, Lucy and Layla. Parents decided to get him for his birthday, spray kit. He goes home that day, he sprays all these shirts. He gets really good at it. He goes back to his job and says, I got an air kit, I'm gonna quit my job. And the guy's like, what? He's like, I'm gonna go spray kit, watch me. And that moment on, he never worked for anybody else but himself. This changed the whole thing for him. People wanted him to do their t-shirts, their hats, sweet 16s, bar mitzvahs. Who's got a shirt from Andalus? from high school. She knew him and got one. So since then, he's evolved ginormously. He went to FIT. He's done murals in the city. He's done murals in California. But what I love about Andalus is that he's a man of ideas. He's somebody who gets an idea and makes it go viral. So for example, his first biggest populist mural was the Pokemon mural. Have you ever seen that in Green Lawn? Green Lawn playing over own? Remember the Pokemon craze when it was huge? People were getting hit by cars because of it. It was this whole big thing. He decided to paint 151 Pokemon players onto the wall for six months. It went so viral and blew him up as an artist. So this one right here, he's got a lot of art in this town and they're all different, tell different story. This is not his original artwork. He normally would not have taken this job. He does not paint by numbers. It's not his thing, but he knows the owner, Chris. They're good friends. And Chris had this completely digitized. So it was very like straight lines and everything else. And when Andalus saw it, he said, you know what? I, I like this, but I gotta make it my own. Can I do that? And they compromised. 
So it's kind of the brainchild of the owner and of Ondelus, but if you look at it, it's not obviously computer digitized. It is very, very smooth lines. He's added elements like the Toy Story clouds to make it seem like it's floating. And obviously, what are you gonna get here if you see this mural? Is it a place that sells noodles? Is it a place walk and roll? It's very clear, right? Does it tell a history at all? Not really. Does it bring people down here for economy to show people to have business around here? Yes. Does it help us socially? Not so much. But is this public art? Public facing art. It's owned by the business. That's right, two points to the girl in the back. Okay, my inspiration actually is Huntington Village. I find it to always been uh, an art village. I actually uh, went to Huntington School of Fine Arts during my high school years. And there's always so many art programs or where you can get involved like the Tulip Festival, Hector Park, and then just in general walking the, all these uh, beautiful stores. It's just it's a nice inspiration and you see the different, um, just different cultures and just kind of different vibes. Everyone has this kind of unique quirky kind of ness to them. And you always find something interesting. So this is done by a guy named Diego Garcia, who grew up in Brentwood. He was kind of an outsider as well, and he found his community through graffiti and he loved graffiti art. He found his friends, his passion, but then he found a teacher named Nicole Franz, who I just talked to you guys about, right? Who actually did a, a mural, did um, an art gallery at Leilu and also at the agency right now selling her artwork. So, Nicole, as his teacher, inspired him to get out of his own way of graffiti and showed him artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, who would use words, and people like Jackson Pollock, who would do splatter paint. And he took that and put it all into his own kind of character. But Diego's thing is, he loves to paint sound and emotion onto things. So look at this wall. Do you see sound? Do you see emotion? Do you see words? You can see his style, right? So I love about this, he says here, sounds are best exchanged in love. It's a powerful statement, you think about it, right? My favorite one is this. Up here it says, you remind me of my favorite song. So I always like to ask my guests what your favorite song is, and think about it in your own head. And think about who that reminds you of. So for me, I always love the song, Sit in the Dock of the Bay. My sister I love to this kid, I always think of her. So I come to this wall, that's how I connect to it. I think of my sister, I pass this wall every time I think of her. So if all you want to connect to this wall, think of your favorite song, think of who you love, and come here and think of that person with this wall. Now this was commissioned by the town last year. Is this public art? Public facing art. Public art! This is my favorite, you're getting classy. Hey, I'm telling you, honey pie. Any questions about Diego? Please. Uh, I just wanted to talk about Diego because he's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I was the one who brought him into this kind of process. Uh, to give you more information, what's great about Diego and Andalus is about their other ways that they give back to the community. We talk about Andalus' public, public public art, but he also has done murals within Walt Women High School yep. uh, about That's the Latino culture yeah. inside of the stairwell. Uh, Diego here actually teaches at the DDS school over near Park Avenue. And these quotes are actually from his students that he put onto this mural. He's sharing that. his students' emotional journey in their art with you through his public art. Um, he's such a great soul and everything that he shares with everybody that it was just about getting, I wanted to make sure he got him and his story. And also to compare a lot of the artists around town, I think that there is sometimes a uh, barrier where people feel they have to have, say, an advanced degree in art or something like that. Diego is, has a high school diploma and then like was like, this is just not for me. You don't need an advanced degree in art. He kind of taught a lot of himself. He had art teachers in high school, but he taught a lot of himself. Sometimes spray printing, you know, subway cars, things like that. But it's about access. Anybody should be able to express their stories and share their stories. Public art is for everybody. Even the artist to do them should have, everyone should have access to do that and share within their community. More public art on the wall. He really wanted to. And so when Graffiti asked him to do a, a sugar skull, he wasn't very excited about it. He was like, all right. So he decided to give him a different design. One that was more him, more dark, more depth. And they were like, no, we don't want that. So he decided to do this piece. But what he did was, what Kieran just talked about, he brought on a second artist. Newflow, Newflow, oh, it's in my notes. But she's a local artist that he wanted to come train. So he actually had her come and do this with him. So to me, it wasn't his favorite artist, it wasn't his favorite mural, but he got to have someone come in and work alongside of him and teach, which I think is all about this community, right? So not his favorite mural, but let's show you one of his favorite and most viral ones. So his second viral idea was, he painted this, like sketched this, without the burger in his hand, okay? There was just this. What he did was, he had an idea to go to 400 businesses and present to them that, I'm gonna make this your mural and I'll put whatever your product is in this hand. He went to, you know, Tommy Tacos, it would've been a taco. He went to Little Vincent, it would've been a pizza. So he knew burgerology, supposed to do a mural from beforehand, went into them and said, hey, I have this idea. And before he even finished, they said, yes, we want this. 
So they painted this mural. It is probably the most photographed mural in Huntington. People come from all over Long Island just to see this picture. And like the other mural, do you not smell burgers right now? Are you not hungry? You're not gonna shop, eat, and drink locally, right? All right, group photo, maybe, no? Let's wait for Finnegan's. We'll do Finnegan's mural, sound good? All right, it's gonna be our last stop. I'm gonna show you guys the history evolution of what you've seen here to a totally different world. All right, so today we've covered public art, public facing art. We've covered how it helps us historically, culturally, economically, socially. This is my favorite historical piece of Huntington because it's the oldest one. It's 44 years old. Now, fin Finnegan's, just so you all know, is the oldest part of Huntington. They've been around for 110 years. Started out in 1912. Andrew Finnegan came over from Ireland and he first opened up what was called the Huntington House. It was a tavern, a bar, a restaurant. It was huge. Went all the way down to where Starbucks is right now in the corner. But in the 1960s, it changed hands out of the Finnegan family. And the only Finnegan that was still owning it at the time and still working there was Bill Finnegan, the cantankerous old bartender. I mean that word nice, you all know what that means though, right? He was that guy. So anyways, in 1970s, a guy named Rusty Pettit owns the bar. And now in 1978, there's a young artist, 23 years old, named Philip Jordan, who is dying to make a name for himself in this town. He wants to put a mural up. He wants to be part of this town. So he approaches Rusty and he says, Rusty, I want to paint a mural on your wall. He's like, what do you want to paint? He goes, I want to paint the inside on the outside. And he's like, uh, oh, all right. He's like, I want to be able to walk by and see what's going on on the inside. And he thought, what a great idea. What an ugly wall before it was. Let's do that. So what they did was, instead of just saying, let's paint a wall, they decided to use 141 real people that were all regulars that summer at Finnegan's. These are all real people. So every single morning, they would meet together, Philip and Rusty, and they decide which regulars were gonna do that. Who's gonna be in the mural? What are they wearing? So what they did was, Philip sketched the whole entire bar empty. And throughout time, they placed each person in the spot. He took a Polaroid of each person's face so they could do it when they were painting. So he starts in 1978 in summertime, paints for six months. He is the talk of the town. He becomes the most famous guy. He's 23 years old. People are buying him beers, giving him drinks. He's loving this. So in December, he's kind of taking a little longer to finish. He doesn't want to end, you know, it's his moment. I don't want to lose my fame. So he finishes it, gets revealed. It's a big talk of the town. Now, when you look at this mural, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a few prominent characters. So for example, you have Bill Finnegan, like I said. You have the owner's parents who are featured right here, front and center, nice and large, pay honor to his parents. You also have the owner, Rusty Pettit. He's in two spots. He's up here greeting his guests. Where is he? Up there in the striped shirt greeting his guests. Right behind him, see the guy in the, in the picture? Painting, who's that? The artist, Philip Jordan. Now in addition to that, you have the artist's family and his niece up in the right-hand corner. They're also there to pay homage to it. So now in 2012, Finnegan's had their 100-year anniversary. So what they did was, they decided to bring back all the old bartenders for the day to come back, get behind the bar. They closed the street down. They had live music, they had bagpipers. And they asked Phil Jordan to come back and repaint this mural. And they got the phone call. He said, absolutely, freaking lovely, I'll come do that. But instead, this time he brought two students with him. He was teaching at the time, and he brought two students who were right here on the wall as well. So if anything ever happens to him, his legacy could continue. And he pulled out that old box of Polaroids, which he still had, and brought it out and redid every single one of these portraits. But he added a few things to it. He didn't just say, let's just do it over. He added things that are important. For example, in this right bottom corner is the town historian, Rufus. It used to say, Finnegan's mural revealed. Now it says, Finnegan celebrates 100 years, mural restored. They also added Tommy Forte. Who's been inside Finnegan's? Who knows Tommy? Right, you know Tommy. How can you not know Tommy? He got put on the wall. He's a fixture. Who knows who Harry Chapin is? Oh, there, that's my, you're losing your title favorite guest. You're coming in. Harry Chapin, paying homage to him also. Up here too, if you go inside, a lot of the stuff on the walls is still there, like the first original liquor license, that's still there. And then I heard a rumor, which I'm gonna tell you anyways, but this clock up here, stopped at 11 o'clock. If you go inside Finnegan's, that same clock is in there, stopped at the same time. Apparently, when World War II ended, they stopped that clock and no one ever touched it again. I like that story, I tell it, I hope it's true. We'll see what happens, I don't really know. I'm gonna go with it though. But what I love about this wall is it gives you a chance to come back to the history of public art, how it all started, the first mural we ever had, and look at the integrity of it. People don't spray paint it, they respect it. And it's also showing our evolution of who we were. Public art is this interaction between businesses, the individuals, government, and how we all interact together. And uh, it always needs your support. There's a lot of ways you can support that by patronizing the businesses that support public art and put it on their buildings. Another great way inside of the town of, inside Hunt, uh, Huntington Township, Thank you, everybody. And one of the greatest parts about it is these public murals are here all the time, 24-7. So it doesn't have to be enjoyed today during the crawl. It's 
year round. And next year when we come back for our third annual, we'll have more murals and more live musicians, get our restaurants more involved. It's It's been an amazing day. We've seen over 200 people, 300 people. The town is buzzing with people that are so engulfed in the arts. Uh, we, we thank everyone for being a part, our artists, our musicians, our restaurants, our business owners, our sponsors. It's been a really beautiful day here and we cannot wait to start the next one.